Hey, so today I thought we'd talk about high-speed flash photography. It's something we're known for, and uh, specifically high-speed flash photography in the field. So if that's something you're interested in, you can like and subscribe, and you'll be notified when we make more videos like this. Okay, so we actually are collaborating um, with Pete Van Zant, and Pete is at what? Birmingham Southern College. Birmingham Southern College. So he came to us with the idea of trying to figure out what pollinates this uh, federally listed plant, Marshallium morii. Marshallium morii is found in uh, glades, and uh, glades are basically just these dry, rocky areas, uh, very similar to the Texas Hill Country, if you've ever tried to put a bucket, dig a bucket in the ground in Texas. Uh, this is this is what this, this kind of habitat reminds me of. And the only reason I bring that up is because um, this sort of habitat did um, lead to some challenges in setting up this, this high-speed setup in the field so yeah so the idea was basically to set up a camera and this high-speed flash um, setup so lasers uh, and flashes around this flower in order to capture insects and moths in particular coming to it to pollinate and so our first approach at this was to just use a series of conventional tripods of different sizes uh, to hold all of this. And it works. Uh, it worked and works. Uh, but it's just an awful lot of uh, feet on the ground, uh, so to speak, especially in a sensitive habitat. And it's just the more, um, it's just more opportunity for things to get knocked over or for things, especially when you're not talking about level ground. It's just a lot of... Or wind to blow and knock them over. Yeah. I mean, it was... A lot of congestion. And, and it's hilly, with. right? So it, there, none of them are... <clears throat> They're sort of, you'll see in the video, it took us a long time to set up these lasers, basically. What's happening here is we're trying to capture uh, moths that are potential pollinators of this Marshallia morii, Marshallia morii uh, flower. Uh, and the idea is we've got two different lasers, offensive lasers that are networked across the flower here. So um, we've got one and two. That's right. And so if something breaks either of those beams at any point along those beams, then you will get uh, an actuation uh, and we'll get an exposure. We're using um, high speed flash uh, to do this. So we've got a shutter on the end of the, the lens with the camera on bulb. And we've got right now just a single flash, mainly because of just the space requirements here. Kind of uh, a sensitive habitat, so. And a sensitive habitat. Uh, the flash is turned down to 1 1 28th power. And so when a laser is broken, the shutter, this shutter opens, this camera is on bulb, the flash exposes the image. Hopefully in this particular case, we're aiming straight down. The moth will be on the edges or the top of the, the flower and we'll get a picture of it. Uh, and then uh, the camera is reset and the, the shutter closes and we're back ready for the next exposure. So the idea behind <clears throat> a 
high-speed flash photography is that your flash is actually a really short duration in order to stop the motion. However, That's we just have one flash here. Do you have it turned down a ways? Or? I have it turned down as low as it'll go, 1 one twenty eighth power. Mm -hmm. so yeah, so we're exposing the image with the flash rather than with the shutter, uh, trying to keep out as much ambient light as possible. And just a very, very short burst of, of uh, light. Uh, the flash basically basically quenches it off so that it's just very abruptly turned off uh, and the exposure would be roughly around 50 thousandth of a second uh, doing it that way. What Did you say what your other settings are in the camera? You said it's on bulb because the shutter... Camera is on bulb. I'm shooting at um, f16 and ISO 400 uh, with this setup. And the purse is there, not just because it's a nice place to hang a purse, but because it's a it little makes, bit, it's a little bit top heavy, the camera. <clears throat> yeah, so again, it worked, but thinking about that and, and thinking about the, the plant and everything, we decided to try to uh, create like a PVC frame uh, that was adjustable, both in height and in length, uh, to anchor everything to. So it provides uh, more stability and rigidity. Uh, everything would be clamped to that, so less, you know, less uh, actually footprint on the ground. And um, so we gave that a try. So right now I will show you that setup, us setting this up piece by piece. And at the end of this video, we will show you each component and how, how to hook it up. Uh, we go over it a little bit in the videos, but at the end we'll show you exactly how to hook all this stuff up. So we're setting up a PVC kind of <clears throat> table to be able to connect lasers, flash, and camera to uh, in an effort to be able to hopefully trigger any moths that, and photograph any moths that come to the flowers here. And the idea is this is adjustable. And this is basically just a trap camera <clears throat> for insects is what we're doing. Correct. This is what we get all of our shots with of our insects in flight. Correct. This is what we use. Yeah. <laughs> we've attached, or we've got the lasers all aligned now. They're all good and aligned. And now what we've gone through is attached the flash and the camera and the shutter to this system, right? Yeah. So we've got basically a, a fence of lasers, two lasers, um, not exactly, not parallel to one another, but independent of one another. And the idea is if either one of them is broken um, by an insect coming in, um, they are talking to this stop shot. And what it will do is immediately turn the laser off so you won't get um, any red reflections. It will open the external shutter uh, on the camera here. The camera is on bulb, uh, is ready for an exposure, and the flash will fire. So why do we need that external shutter on there then? The external shutter is to deal with something called shutter lag, um, which is uh, basically when the, the mechanical shutter is fast enough to deal with all of this, but the electronics, uh, ironically, uh, are not in the camera. So by the time it takes you to you know, push the shutter, the exposure button, mirror has to go up, um, and, and then the uh, shutter uh, opens you have uh, you've missed your subject uh, so this way you can have the camera on bulb the entire time ready for an exposure but you're just blocking off light with this external shutter which operates much quicker um, and then you have your flashes turned down power wise as low as you can this is a Canon 540EZ turned down to 1 1 28th power that will allow us to stop any motion of, of a moth flying in uh, so as to, um, you know, capture a good image. I'm trying it with just a single flash here. We'll check exposure in a second. May have to add a second one uh, because we do have limited light uh, and we're trying to get it across three different flowers there. But this may work because we're close enough. Yeah, because normally when we're trying to do high speed uh, photography, we actually at home, we have like 24 flashes that we have turned all the way down. So this, we just have one. That's right. Yeah, at home we're lighting up backgrounds as well as the, the trying to do different things with the subject. But here, just because of the limited working area, we're trying to get away with just one or two. Um, 
So, and then we just have the camera focused kind of straight down so it can see all three of those flowers. Uh, so again, if any moth hits any one of those beams or comes to any one of those flowers, we should be able to get a shot. And it's more of a documentation shot than, than anything else uh, at this point. One, yeah. And this is uh, on Marshalia, the, this... Uh, Morii, right? Morii. This, this uh, federally listed... Federally listed plant. We're just trying to figure out what pollinates it at night. Okay, so that was our most recent setup uh, with the PVC table uh, to attach everything to. And we really liked it. Um, we got a little ambitious and a little excited and uh, tried to do three flowers all at once. And that was way too ambitious. Um, some of those shots that you kind of saw going off there, um, a lot of stuff was not in focus that was tripping it. And it was because we had those lasers trying to hit the tops of a few different flowers. So... I yeah. got the field just wasn't enough to be able to do all of it. Yeah, I think um, in the future we should limit it to one or two flowers looking straight down. And with this particular flower, a lot of times there are two flower heads that come up right next to one another, and I think we could totally do that. I think having a third one kind of off just to the, uh, away from the other two like we did in this setup was um, uh, a little too eager, as Kendra said. L less is more with this setup. <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, and how did you feel about the one flash? Do you think we're going to need another one? I think, um, I think we could get away with one, but I think, um, if our budget allows, it's not a bad idea to have uh, a second one. Second, yeah, because we do, we want to set up, well, we initially thought six, but we think we're probably only going to get five, five setups, set -ups out, of out of this, just because there were, there's so much other little pieces we needed to attach everything. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, five setups, and then we'll run these at night. And we do think it's a moth that pollinates this guy. Yeah. So. Or more than one. Or more than one, yes. Many moths. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and we actually have seen some of it just sitting out in the field waiting for these, um, the setup to work. Okay, so now what we thought we would do is just show you each uh, individual component of the stop shot in case you wanted to try this um, yourself and uh, we'll just show you how to how to you know what cords you need and how to um, plug everything together to be able to set this up in the field yourself okay so I thought we'd take you through each of the individual components because it can be a little overwhelming uh, perhaps at first and a little hard to it looks like a tangled mess of spaghetti uh, in does. the video. It does. <laughs> and it can, um, you know, it can be hard. Yeah, exactly. Hard to see what is going on when it's all connected. So I have all the principal components separated here, disconnected, uh, and just thought I would go through and kind of um, talk about each one of these. Okay, so the, the brains of it all is the Cognosis Stop Shot. So this is basically a sophisticated intervalometer with three output channels. Um, this is what controls everything and is very, very useful for high-speed flash photography, although you can use it for time-lapse and, and other types of photography as well. So can you quickly just say what an intervalometer is? Intervalometer is just a uh, tool that allows you to do different things um, relevant to timing with the camera. So having your camera on extended bulb, shooting a shot every so often, uh, you know, at a specific time, um, resetting uh, the camera, you know, after a specific amount of time when it's on bulb, um, things along those lines. And you can combine that. You can, you know, also an intervalometer will allow you to control how many shots you take. So in other words, you could take five shots right after one another every 30 seconds uh, you know, type of thing. That's what an intervalometer would allow you to do. And a lot of modern cameras these days actually have intervalometer um, characteristics built into, or inter intervalometer abilities built into the camera for basic things. But this is a very, very sophisticated one with three different uh, outputs. You can control not only 
uh, your uh, camera, but in this case, we're going to be talking about a shutter uh, as well. So it's like a little tiny computer to get your camera and flashes and everything to do things at certain time intervals. So. It, exactly. So one um, pro tip for using this in the field that uh, I kind of accidentally stumbled upon, I suppose, is that this is what the stop, stop shot looks like when, when you get it. Uh, it has a sensitivity dial or a gain control knob right on the top. And you can see that um, it sticks out compared to everything else. Um, when I started traveling uh, with a stop shot, despite how carefully I tried to pack things, um, uh, that knob gets sheared off right away. So you can actually just remove it, uh, or I, you know, I tried to actually replace it at one point, happened again, and I was like, well shoot, why am I even bothering to do that? I can totally adjust the knob as it is and it's it's not you know sitting up so high that it would get um sheared off uh you know when packed away and subject to uh airplane baggage handlers and things like that so anyway this is the stop shot um i'm not going to get into the program side of the stop shot but more just how everything would connect together cognis's website has great tutorials on programming if you want to to look that up. We'll, we'll put that in the description below so that you can you they, can look yourself. They do. And one of the nice things about the stop shot is you can actually, there's some default programs in there. You can save your own programs and then load them back. Uh, you know, whether you're using one laser, two laser, infrared, things like that. Um, and we may do videos later on with um, a little bit more about the programming of things and also, uh, you know, using high-speed flash photography in a studio. So the way that we had this set up out in the field um, with the Marshallia project is that you've got to power this. Uh, and so I've just got a lithium-ion battery uh, that uh, powered it. Uh, I've got a uh, splitter cable here for the power. Um, and the reason for that, one end goes into the um, stop shot, the other end goes into the shutter driver, which is this other kind of uh, electronic device that you need if you're going to be using the shutter. So this is what powers both of these things, having that, that uh, cord split like that. The shutter, um, this is the external shutter that fits on the end of the lens. It can fit on pretty much any... Uh, or can't fit on any camera, you just use a different uh, step-down ring here to, um, to, to fasten it to, onto the end of your lens. Uh, depending upon the sensor size and the size of lens you're using, because this is a very small, I think it's like 34 millimeter opening, you may get some vignetting. Um, and so sometimes it's better to use actually cameras with smaller sensors like APS-C, and 1.6 or 1.5 crop sensors. But this simply sc screws on via thread to the, the um, filter threads on the end of your lens. Then there's a cable that connects the actual shutter to the shutter driver. Um, then the shutter driver has the power uh, port, which is what I just showed you, how you would plug that in. You have a, a button that would literally opens and closes the shutter so you can actually uh, focus um, uh, before you get everything activated. And then you have two RCA ports, one for the trigger in and one for the flash sync. So the trigger in uh, is what you would connect to the stop shot. The stop shot is what's going to control the lasers and the triggering of the shutter. So this would go to one of the, the channels uh, on the stop shot. Uh, I have it going to uh, the second channel and then you have a flash sync um, that so the three channels are trigger the RCA one, trigger two, trigger three. so the three channels on the stop shot are right here listed as trigger one two and three um, the so the shutter driver would plug into trigger two uh, where it says trigger in and then the flash sync is what it was where you plug your flashes in if you're just using one flash, you can just plug it directly in. And if you're using multiple flashes, you can use um, uh, an RCA, like Y splitters, just gang a bunch of those together. Or I just have a 
uh, an RCA uh, multi-port uh, device that I just uh, built uh, where you would just plug um, the shutter driver via mail to mail RCA into into this and then you can uh, plug in up to five more flashes they're just all ganged together onto this but you don't need that you need this if you're going to be shooting more than one flash um, although you don't have to use this th this device in particular you could use Y splitters which you can typically get in um, I used to be able to say our, uh, Radio Shack, but they're no longer around. So um, online or places that might sell such things, I don't know what would anymore locally. But fries, um, get it online at fries. If you're fortunate enough to be, uh, yeah, near a fries. Um, and so you might say, well, how are you controlling your flash via uh, an RCA cable? Uh, and so the way to do that is just, just a uh, hot shoe that you can plug into the bottom of your flash that has an RCA coming off of it. You can make these pretty easily. You can buy these out there if you do enough looking around. And Cognosys uh, also uh, sells them. So you would just plug uh, the, each one of these flashes into your into the, the however you're ganging them together and then plug the that into your shutter driver. Uh, I just use RCA extension cords uh, when I need the flash to be farther out. Uh, one other thing I want to mention about the flash, um, first of all I like to use Canon 540 EZs um, for high-speed flash photography. Um, it's one of a couple of flashes that I use for this uh, but um, they don't make these anymore. It is an electronic flash, but you can get them still fairly inexpensively, um, you know, via eBay and used camera stores. Um, it does a really good job with uh, high-speed flash photography. Um, turning it down to 1 128th power allows you to really uh, stop the motion better than some other flashes, even also if they're turned down to 1 128th. So this is a good flash. For that, <clears throat> just because there's more power going out, or why why does this work and not others? You can plug in, you you can connect these flashes to an oscilloscope to see just how uh, short a duration they have at these various powers. And the Canon 540 EZs have a shorter duration, which is what you need for high speed flash photography, than a lot of other comparable flashes that are out there. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention about flashes uh, is powering them. So you're because you're turning down the, the, the flash power, you're not going to go through batteries uh, you know super fast, but at the same time if you're leaving a flash out all night uh, and you get a lot of hits, you may go through the double A's that are in the flash uh, fairly quickly or you know at least before the end of the night. I wanted to figure out a way to give the flash extended power, uh, but in an inexpensive way, because uh, there are very expensive ways of doing that. And so what I've done is I bought, a long time ago, I bought a bunch of very inexpensive, it's a JJC model number FB-1. I don't even know if, they, if these are still available. We can look. Um, external battery packs. These were pretty darn cheap. And the idea is that you can just <clears throat> put in... Uh, what 12 AA batteries into this to give the the flash extended power I didn't want to have you know 12 AA batteries even rechargeable in every one of these because oftentimes we're using it like four of these in the field that's a lot of batteries to keep up with so what I did was I took this apart uh, and basically created an external port, uh, power port, it's just an M-type um, power port. I put this in to this. You can still use double A's with it the way I did this. But I added this additional port to it, um, which will, allows me to then connect a uh, little 14-volt lithium-ion battery, just with Velcro, uh, to this pack. And then I can hang it by this Velcro wherever I want. This then plugs into just like um, any, just like it's designed to go, this plugs into your flash, in this case a Canon flash. It's designed specifically for Canon. So this, uh, these are then rechargeable. 
Um, this will allow the, the flash to have ample power uh, for uh, an extended period of time. I've really not run into any problems with, with uh, the flash going dead um, using this system. Uh, and it's really not too, uh, too tricky to, um, to wire up. Although, I will tell you, uh, as I remember, again, I did this years ago, one um, thing is test with a multimeter where your po what your positive and negative leads are. Don't just assume that's, that they wired them uh, with red being positive and black being negative because the first time I did one of these, I made that assumption, and it was just the opposite. Uh, in, inside, black was positive. So check with a multimeter uh, to make sure that your voltages are correct. But uh, this is a pretty easy way to give you additional power to your so, flash. So what happened <clears> when, that, when, when you fried, fried the board? Fried, fried the, board. the board, yeah. But these are not the flash, but the board and the, the power pack. But those, again, were super cheap. Uh, you can buy more expensive ones, like from Canon directly, but those are just uh, third-party Chinese knockoffs that were really, really um, cheap. Okay, so I've talked about how you connect the shutter uh, to the, the shutter driver uh, and the flashes to the shutter driver. The shutter driver then is connected to um, the stop shot um, through trigger two. And then trigger one is connected, uh, is where the camera is connected. Uh, you can just use a, a straight up RCA cable or Cognosys makes one that's got a switch on it. I find that very useful because if you don't do that, uh, you have to un physically unplug the RCA cable or from the stop shot or the remote cable from the camera, the other end, in order to um, gain control of your camera back. Uh, this way, you can just plug this directly in uh, to the channel of the RCA. The other end goes into uh, your camera, and again, Cognosys sells these for all the major camera models. But there's a switch in the middle that allows you to turn it off so that you can then gain control back of your camera without having to physically unplug one of these uh, ports. So it's a little bit more expensive, but I, it's well worth uh, having this switch in the middle. <clears throat> so we've talked about everything now, uh, you know, being connected except for the triggers themselves, uh, in this case using lasers. So also on the stop shot, you have two different inputs. You have a sensor and you have a mic uh, input. Uh, <clears throat> and so with using the lasers, you're just going to plug a um, 1 8 inch uh, you know, stereo cable uh, into the sensor. The other end of that then will go into uh, the receiver. Um, you can just use one laser and one receiver or you can use two. Um, this is uh, receiver A if you're only using one. Um, if you're using two, you're still going to start with stop shot going into uh, the receiver and it's nicely labeled so you know exactly where it needs to go. So it goes from the stop shot where it says sensor into the port here that says stop shot. Very straightforward. If you are then um, so then you need to get power to the laser itself, and so that's what the smaller stereo port there is for. It says uh, X emitter power, so you just plug a cable into there, and then into the backside of your laser. And that will provide power to your laser. Uh, here I've just got it on a little mini tripod uh, so that it can, um, the receiver can then detect it. <clears throat> if you're going to use two lasers, then you simply plug, take a cable that goes from receiver B, plug it into there on receiver A, into uh, the port that says receiver A on your receiver B. <laughs> and they, they label the receiver A and receiver they, B. Yeah, they come labeled, so it's pretty straightforward. And then receiver B, of course, also has a laser that's associated with it, the X emitter power. So just like with receiver A, you would connect a cord there to that laser. And these uh, lasers and receivers then can either be used in parallel, which is what we are basically doing out in the field, uh, where you have two different parallel uh, laser beams where either one can, um, can trigger the action, or you can use it as a cross beam so that action will only happen at a single point. 
You can also be sophisticated if you've got them in parallel like this and say you want to trigger it uh, when this one is broken, but only after this laser beam is broken. So in other words, this beam is broken, but nothing happens, and then this beam gets broken. So you're detecting the direction um, uh, that uh, activity is happening. So you can do sophisticated things like that with the stop shot as well. In this particular scenario with the Marchelli on the field, we didn't care about direction. We wanted to, to um, capture an insect coming from either direction and breaking the beam anywhere along it. So I just had them set up as two parallel beams independent uh, of one another. Okay, so that is our setup for photographing high-speed insects in the field. And um, if you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear them below. Uh, we will try to put as many links below as possible. And uh, we'll let you know how this turns out. Um, and we'll also do a video on how we do this. We actually do this most of the time in the studio. So we'll show you our studio setup as well. And uh, so if this is something that you enjoy, you can like and subscribe to us. It really encourages us to make more videos like this. So um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.